Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Thank you for your patience over the last hour, and thank you for the readers and in, in the job they did. I rise to open debate on this very, very important issue. As we debate this hallmark piece of legislation, keep in mind the over overarching promise of the legislation, local control. The bill returns authority and accountability to local elected school board members. Senators, many of you know that I served locally uh, in the Coeur d'Alene School District for three years on the board. I served that district because I, I wanted to serve my community and because I wanted to see student achievement improve. What I quickly found is I had little voice in many decisions, not because it was mandated by the state, but because the previous school board had already negotiated it away. The evergreen provision of state law provides for a master agreement to live forever. It doesn't matter that a current board wants to make a change. It doesn't matter that the agreement includes issues like bell schedules, how to grade students, who was on lunch duty. The current board is shackled with those decisions made 10, 20, or even 30 years ago. Fellow senators, we don't bind future legislators. We shouldn't bind school, future school board members. If we trust them enough to elect them, we should trust them enough to let them do their jobs and to be able to make important decisions, especially when they deal with local personnel. This bill gives school board members who are elected today a say in what happens in their districts versus being bound by school boards of yesterday. In addition to streamlining collective bargaining, the bill phases out continuing contracts. In Idaho, if you teach for three years, you get a continuing contract. To this, get this contract, you don't have to prove that you've improved student achievement. You don't have to prove that you've done a good job. You just get it. And once you've got it, you have it forever. The only way to remove a poor teacher in Idaho's classrooms is for the taxpayers to expend upwards of $75,000 in legal fees while the teacher is still in the classroom. Under this bill, if a teacher has a continuing contract, he has the right to keep it. It's his property right. But new teachers who haven't met the three-year mark will be offered a two-year rolling contract. There are some who say that these changes will cause teachers to flee Idaho. Right now, we know we are losing teachers every day, not only to other states, but to the private sector, where there is no due process, no lifetime contracts, but teachers have the opportunity to earn more money. We also know that states throughout this nation are examining these same issues. Wisconsin, New Jersey, Indiana, Yesterday, the Indiana State Senate passed a similar bill to return the balance of powers to local school boards. These states are all considering this, but they have not considered the large investment in teacher pay we are considering here in Idaho. We will be debating that issue soon. Through this plan, we will be able to attract and retain more high-quality teachers in Idaho by offering a two-year contract, potential increased pay, and opportunities to earn bonuses. The balance over the past 30 years have tipped too far, has tipped too far, and this bill gives authority back to those in charge, local elected school boards. The arguments not to pass the Indiana bill were the same as we've heard in Idaho. Opponents claim that any bill that looks at labor relations as anti-teacher will leave teachers subject to political wins. Nothing could be farther than the truth. This bill is about returning balance of, of authority to school boards and to the public. Teachers will still have due process rights in their contracts. That has not changed. If a teacher is discriminated against, that's illegal. Teachers would have legal recourse. And ultimately, school boards would be responsible. We must encourage, we must recognize that determining factors in a child's academic career as the quality of the teacher in the classroom. Research proves this over and over. Even one year in a poor performing teacher, teacher's classroom can have a devastating effect on its students. My fellow senators, we can't leave good te teaching to chance. 
Our system today makes it difficult to reward effective teachers and hard to remove less effective teachers. If we can have an education system that truly puts students first, we have to eliminate both barriers. This bill isn't about collective bargaining or continuing contracts or evergreen. It's about putting students first. That's why teachers' evaluations must be tied to student academic growth. Parents finally have an input. For too long, we've talked about parent parental involvement being crucial to success in schools, but we don't give parents the opportunity beyond bake sales or booster clubs. Under this legislation, parental input must be considered in teacher evaluations. And again, local school districts will be able to decide how much and how input is considered. We also give parents more information. Salary negotiations will be held open, and master agreements will be published online. My fellow senators, your education committee has spent hours hearing public testimony and deliberating the superintendent's reform bills. This bill has, has this bill's time has come. Uh, Mr. President, with that, the debate is open.